All right, hey, welcome back. We are moving on to the Italian peninsula. Yes, yes, we need some pasta. Yeah, maybe a little bit of nice red wine, something along those lines. But first off, let's do a little bit of recap. As we saw, El Alamein, you've got Bernard Montgomery and the British racing to the west from El Alamein. And as the Americans are coming in from the east, if you will... From Casablanca. Oh, well, he's headed west. We're headed east. Yep. Yep. And we're meeting in here Tunisia. in Tunisia, and specifically in the Battle of Tunis. Yes. Which, if you have seen anything of a map, Tunis is the little bit that jumps right out <laughs> into the Mediterranean from Tunisia, yep. mm -hmm. and is a very good launching point for another big island, the Boot. Right. Is kicking. Yes. And, of course, that would be and for, Sicily. And fortunately for us, uh, we mentioned a couple episodes ago, that that island of Malta. Oh, yes, yes. That is kind of in between Africa and Sicily. Mm -hmm. The British held it. Despite right. the siege, despite the bombings, they held the island um, for the entirety of the war, which means going into Sicily is now... Easy. Yeah. I'm a, I mean, it's not going to be easy. Well, easy, no, but you know no, what I mean. Of course, it's easier for the Americans to really just jump in the British. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can't gotta, leave them gotta, out. Got to include those, the, the Brits. But the jump from the continent of Africa on to now, well, Sicily and eventually into southern Italy. But mm -hmm. the thing here is, of course, this is where we start to see Sherman... Not Sherman, Patton. Patton. Patton and his. We already saw him in North Corps. Africa doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, he stands out even in North Africa where things weren't that hard and we did suffer some setbacks. But yeah, as a real, not just a go getter, ah, fight, 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 blood and guts yeah. guy, yeah. but also a maneuver oriented general. He wants to have his army in motion. Well, and. Just like Rommel. Yeah. And I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Patton was a, a historical, he, he studied history yes. quite a bit. Yes. And he studied specifically the history of, well, famous generals, Julius Caesar, oh, yeah, I mean, Bonaparte, and, you know, using some of their battle tactics in a way to help his, okay, taking it to 20th century in tanks, but using kind of their strategies and tactics to implement into his. Yes. Yeah. Well, and if you ever get a chance, the movie Patton. Yeah. Um, with uh, George C. Scott, really good movie. Um, you know, a biopic. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the book Killing Patton. Yeah. Good information about Patton right. in general. Phil O'Reilly uh, and Martin Degard. Yeah. Did a great yeah. job with that, and and. It gives you an idea who he was, mm -hmm. and really, regardless of how anything else we know about Patton, the fact that the Germans considered him the best American general tells you everything you need to know. Right. <laughs> I yeah, mean, I mean... The Germans were worried about him, which becomes very important later in the war. He's, he's, he, he, he was a three-star? Is that correct? Yes, to start with, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And He was an army commander. Right. You know, which army, not the whole army, but... A group of divisions, or right. corps, typically. Right. Usually, Usually two or more corps are gathered into what's called an army, which right. does not make any sense to me either. It should no. be, I don't know, come up with a new name. But right. they have army and army group. I mean, group what? of armies? What? what? Whatever. Because he was the third army division, correct? The third army. Third, third army. Third army. That's, right. that's his command, right. third army. Right. Through the whole, through the whole, well, through most of the war. Most of the war. Omar okay. Bradley, another mm -hmm. guy who was very close to him in age in West Point, mm -hmm. uh, was a fellow commander. Also very good. Much more meticulous. Much more, I don't know, I want to say engineer based. But he he was a, probably a good middle person between mm -hmm. Montgomery, who was very set piece. Every everything is orchestrated down to the minute. Oh my gosh! And yeah. Patton, who can literally turn an army on a dime and go at, at speed, yeah. and then you know Bradley probably fits in the middle of those. Yeah, that, yeah. But that, he'll come in more in Normandy. But yes, um, those are kind of our big three commanders. I mean, you have Mark Clark, which we'll meet here in Italy. 
Or Great name, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, if he had a car dealership, he would have been sad. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm, that's you a know. good idea. So anyway, we see now the jump here from Tunisia into the the football of Sicily. And <laughs> what we see, yes. of course, is this is... Geographically speaking, Sicily is mountainous. Well, all of Italy. Not just Sicily, but I mean, right. the whole Italian peninsula is basically the Apennine mountain range. Right. Uh, so not easy terrain. Definitely no. not what Winston Churchill called the soft underbelly oh, of Europe. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it's softer in the sense that you're fighting the Italians for the most part instead of Germans, but that's that's kind of a stretch. Right. I mean, Churchill even wanted to invade in Greece, which is even more mountainous. Oh, that would be terrible. Um, but just Churchill had a, he had an ulterior motive. Uh, of course. He wasn't worried about defeating the Germans alone. He wanted to stop the Soviets. But yeah, that's, well, that's a different strategy. Then the Americans were later. not interested. No. We want they to... are our allies. Our goal is to defeat Nazi Germany and then we'll go home. Because yeah. that's what we do. We're yeah. Americans. Well, hey, <laughs> that's how things go for us. We're yes. here for one job. Once we're done, we're going home. Yeah. We're not staying. Well, we, we're lo we're wrong about that. But later on. Well, you know. That's what our thinking was. It's foreshadowing. But yes, we'll get there yes. later. But Husky. Yes. As an operation. Husky. First big airborne operation for right. the Allies. Right. Um, and then, of course, you have Montgomery and... Um, Patton. Patton. Mm -hmm. They land kind of at the corner. It's not really a football. It's more like a triangle. Yeah, but yeah. If you, you think know. of it as a triangle. Yeah. And... The goal is Messina, which is up in mm -hmm. this corner here. We mm -hmm. land down at this corner. Mm -hmm. Montgomery has to take his forces and go the short side. Yes. Patton has to go out and up. Oh, my goodness, really? That's the race. Oh, wow. I, and, and unfortunately, he's against very second-rate Italian troops. Because, I mean, the first-rate Italian troops are in prisoner war camps in America. Right. Because <laughs> they were in Africa. Yeah, right. <laughs> they, they're done. Yes. So you're not fighting the varsity anymore. So You're, you're not even fighting the Italian varsity, which is definitely yeah. B-team level. Yeah, right. And so, you know, and we, we've talked about their officer corps. It's very much so the, what, yeah. what are the officers that had to stay home? Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, those are the kind of guys you see on MASH. <laughs> right. Right. So... <laughs> so, you know, but Patton pulls it off. He does. He's, he manages to go the long way. And he cuts off. He, he gets to, to Messina, Messina first, first before Montgomery. and uh, really Hard fighting. But, yeah. And this is where he really establishes reputation for a maneuver. Mm -hmm. I mean, a mountainous island, but mm -hmm. he's still getting tanks around people. Correct. I mean, he, when he, he thinks outside the box. Uh, well, yeah. In a very that. big way. Very good at planning these these quick on the move operations and communicating them to his commanders. Right. And that's a, it's not something people talk about, but the ability to come up with a great plan is wonderful. But if you can't explain it to the guys who have to do it, you're kind of losing you're, translation there. So for the sure. the ability to plan it and execute it is just an amazing. Well, it, and it's an underrated ability. Well, and then that's why General Patton was one of the greatest generals that the Germans feared. Yes. That he was able to do that with his armored division and his armor his armored army and moving so quickly through this mountainous region and eventually when you get into an area that's a little softer, like <laughs> southern France. Yeah. Things get a little different for him. But with Operation Husky, this is a fairly would you say simple operation? Well, I mean, in the sense, uh, on the map, it looks simple. Yeah. Obviously, the logistics of right. landing tens of thousands of men and supplying them for weeks is never simple, and it, it's complicated beyond belief, really. Mm -hmm. But the battle for Sicily doesn't take very long. Uh, it's, well, really, July. Yeah. I mean, a month. And it's funny, because I don't know how many histories of World War II and stuff I've read, the, the invasion of Italy itself is kind of like, oh, we did it. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a big really... uh, name for it. No. You, you, and, and, and again, in all the times that I've taught the class, I'd never thought of, of the, the operation of actually invading. The toe. The toe. Of, <laughs> yeah, the toe of Italy. And, and how the, you're, you're moving your way up into kind of the, the, the upper boot 
of, well, of the peninsula. Gotta get to the ankle at least. Yeah. And I know we land around Naples. Right. Um, but then there's a complicating factor for the battle for Italy. Well, mm -hmm. one, of course, the mountain range. Yes, That's a course. huge complicating. Of course. The Germans send more troops, mm -hmm. which, of course, stretches them a little thinner on mm -hmm. the eastern front, which is a good thing mm -hmm. from the Allied perspective. Well, the Russians are definitely happy about that, for sure. Oh, it comes at a really good time. We'll talk about that probably in a couple weeks. Yeah. We'll talk about the 1943 fighting in the Soviet Union. But after Husky... They don't use the airborne. No, in Italy, they no. have to go to England for a while. Well, and Big Red One, mm -hmm. they they land at Anzio and then go to England. But Patton leaves, and goes to England. Why do they all go to England? They're getting ready for a preparation yeah. of some sort. They're looking mm. at less than a year. Yeah, they're putting troops on to France. Well, and you've got to realize the 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 obvious. The obvious training that goes into how you're going to maneuver your troops, and again, we're foreshadowing a little bit, but again, this, this operation of Operation Husky mm -hmm. helps to prepare what's going to happen in Operation Overlord. Well, it's especially for the airborne. Yes. It changes how they're going to do things. Right. Because they learn from their mistakes, because mistakes cost lives. Of course they do. How, you know, how many sticks did they drop into the ocean? Oh, gosh. Um, which is not a fair fight. Uh the ocean winds. Yeah, when, of when you're weighed down 120 pounds of stuff, mm. and you land in water, you're done. Yeah, there's you no way. There's just no way you're coming out of that. Nope. Um, um, but but again, the idea, of course, is that that with what eventually becomes Operation Shingle, the deadly yeah. boot, as I like to call it as well. Yes. The, there there are multiple battles here. You've got again. You've got Battle of Monte Cas Monte Cassino, uh, which right, which is really famous because. We have to hold our fire a lot, yes, because it's a historical site. Well, in the, the, the that monastery, monastery on, the on the hill, where you have so what we thought was a German stronghold, eventually turned out to be a farce. Well, it was an observation post, right? I mean, they weren't anything. not using it. It's just, but, yeah, but it wasn't like a fortress, right? We weren't using like what we see with Anzio, right? Um, you know, and of course Anzio again, another one of these major battles um, that that the Americans. We we have to be we get bloodied up a little bit. Well, we land we a little far up. north, for probably farther north than we should have. Uh -huh. But you got to pick a good beach. Sure. And we this is another lesson learned. So many of these lessons we talked about that with uh, Dieppe. Yes, yes. Um, with the Canadians, we learn about it with Husky with the Airborne. We learn about it at Anzio. You've got to get off the beach quickly and push inland. You've got to get depth. Well, if otherwise, we... when the counterattack comes, you got nowhere to go. If you think about it, I think it, it, battle tactics. You mm -hmm. know, if you've got a guy who's up on the higher ground, of course, if you're in the mountains. Well, if you're coming out of the ocean, you're probably on the low ground. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're coming out of the ocean on the low ground. You got a guy who's on the high ground. He's looking down at you. You're kind of a sitting duck here. Yeah, he could be like eating a sandwich and lobbing a grenade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you got to really push up and get as much as you can up onto your enemy. These, again, all are fortune-telling secrets, if you will, of what is to come in about a year, yeah, 11 well, less, months less, from ten, now. Well, what, 10 months? Yeah, roughly. After Anzio? Roughly about later. that, yeah. So and the nice thing, of course, is, you know, Italy allows fighting year-round because the weather's nice. Well, yeah, you're, oh. you're in a Mediterranean climate. You're not having to worry about snow. Other than the rainy season, which is brutal because you're trying yeah. to climb up muddy mountains. But mm. Italy is... You know, it is the war for the act, the Allies for quite a bit of this time frame sure. in, in 1943, early mm -hmm. 1944, because it's the only place we're fighting the Germans head, head to head. head. Right. But it's also during this time that Italy quits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and again, you got to realize Mussolini has been in, a, in, in, in office for now over the 20-year period. Yeah, well, it's right at 20 years in, and, in, in yeah. 1943, yeah. And I think he's starting to realize, ah... Uh, I'm not winning much. Well, his people realize it if nobody else does. Yeah. Um, he probably didn't. You know, he probably still, as he was going down on his dying breath, I'm El Duce! And, of course, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he he, sur he doesn't surrender. No, he doesn't. Uh, is it Victor Emmanuel? I do I believe is the king. Mm -hmm. A group of people basically launch a coup. Right. And then Hitler rescues him. 
using <laughs> Otto Scorsini and some commandos. Oh, Pretty cool little nice. operation. Probably make a good movie, except the good guy, the guys that you would root for, like the commandos, are the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, Why I'm so, would you want to make a movie about a guy who's going to be... I think it would be a good... I still think it would be a good movie. I think sure. it is a rescue operation. Mm -hmm. It's... Pretty cool. I mean, it was well done. I mean, we're not. They don't have helicopters and stuff. They've oh, got to no. do things. You're you're you get on there, foot. And they, and... But anyway, they they get Mussolini out and they take him to Germany, where he continues to rally his fascist supporters in Italy, which are still plenty. Um, yeah, but because people again, don't like change. No, of course not. But again, you know, by like what we saw in early forty three, uh, sorry, early forty four. My apologies. We do see a large number of Germans starting to flood into here, Anzio, oh, it's, it's other a German places. War. Yes, it's not an Italian. It's war. not. They're no, out of the war. No, basically. yeah, and and which again bogs the Americans down. Well, when you have to fight for every you know literally, over literally, a mountain range, and yeah. then you got to fight through the valley with the guys on the other side who have the high ground. Right, right. Then you have to go over that mountain range. Right. It's just it's it's too much. It's. You have to, it, it works well for a Montgomery or a Mark Clark. Set piece, massive artillery fire. Sure. You, you basically fight it almost like a World War One battle. Yeah. You just have to suppress the enemy so badly. Um, that it's, they're, they're breaking the, the, their You will. have to destroy them with artillery before, because otherwise your troops have no chance to get to them. Because right. it's just too hard. Right. And, but I mean, the Allies keep pushing up the boot. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get to, what? Right before it fans out, really, by the end of the war. Yeah, right there about the... Right just on the... Yeah, I would say the foothills of maybe the the, the Alps, but yeah, not the, so much... What is that? that? The Po River Valley? Mm, yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah. But the thing here is by June of 44, Rome is now Rome liberated. Falls. Yes. And it is now becoming a... Well, for a lack of a better term, it's now in Allied hands, and we are... Well, Italy has surrendered. Yeah. Um, it, Rome has fallen. It, you know, it looks good. It's just, at the rate we're going, we're not going to conquer Germany from the south until, like, 1953. Well, yeah, because you're... <laughs> well, think about it. You go you go from Italy, where you have to, to literally fight tooth and nail up these mountains... And then you go into the Alps. Which are bigger. <laughs> which are more. more yeah. And then, of course, after you get over the Alps, what do you end? You're in Switzerland, or you're in Austria. Yeah. Or you're in Germany, where they're really mad. Yeah, so... So... Not the greatest This solution. is not going to be... However, and we'll talk about this probably next time, Yeah. when we talk about the air war. Yes. These bases in Italy allow us to range on the Plesti oil fields in Romania Ooh. really well. That helps. I mean, shorter range bombers doing multiple attacks. Because <laughs> the Germans were very good at disguising it. We'll talk more about that later, I hope. But uh, you've got this air war that's going on, and these bases, they get closer and closer to Berlin. And, and that's, you and know, that's of course, our, our common goal for both the Soviets as well as the... Americans and British. Well, I mean, when you think about it, it's the same goal we have in the Pacific. Correct. Take an island that can be used as an airfield so yep. we can extend our power farther yep. farther along. And uh, make it again closer to Tokyo. You know, when you get a lot of those, you know, when you get B-25s, B-24s, B-25s flying overhead, that's you're scary. really scary because, you know, they're the shorter range ones. Yeah. Uh, the B-17s, they're really long range, so you know they can get there. Yeah. But when they start having fighters with them, that starts That's getting really, really mm -hmm. problematic. In fact, I do believe uh, uh, the Tuskegee Airmen, that squadron, I can't remember, Correct. the Red Tails, yes. flew out of Italy. Yes. Um, they started, of course, in North Africa, and, yes. and then as we moved into Sicily, and then, of course, into Northern Italy, they did do a lot of escorts into, heck, well, Germany. Yeah, all the way Romania, to Romania, everywhere. Yeah, they're uh, everywhere. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, I've, I've seen Tuskegee Airmen, and then there was the other one. The Red Tails. The Red Tails. I didn't mm -hmm. like that one as well. Yeah. That I was more that, Hollywood. I was going to say, that, that, Tuskegee I, seemed like a more of a historical drama. Right. Yeah. You, you, well, it was also older. So yeah, but things it was, were a little bit. What, 95? Somewhere around there. Know. But you have people like Lawrence Fishburne, and you have uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, it is what it is, but but uh, that's Hollywood. Unfortunately, they like to. But we don't have a lot of good. There's uh, you can watch the movie The Big Red One. 
Thing. Sure, I don't recommend it. No, <laughs> we watched it last summer. Uh, uh, not so, not so, no, no bueno. Yeah, well, when you were in your when you were in your teens in the seventies, watching getting it, to see an R-rated movie was, was probably like, more of an attraction. Yeah. Um, um, but there's not a lot. There is a movie called Anzio. Correct. But I, I, there's just that not one's a, lot a little of different stuff though. About, uh, Patton. The yeah. movie Patton does pretty good with Italy, uh, Sicily. Yeah, but once you get past Sicily, what do you really see? You don't really see much of anything in terms of of, of real good drama coming out of Hollywood or even movies Not in the Italian campaign. It just no. doesn't get a lot of film. I mean, well, it doesn't get much help anywhere. No, History doesn't because really, really do after justice. Enzio, they can't even do another landing because all their boats get taken mm -hmm. to get ready for D-Day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, the Operation mean, Overlord is really the one that's taking precedence. It's the, the everybody knows it's coming. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, all the commanders in Italy know it's coming. Even the Germans know the, it's coming. I was going to say, even the Germans know it's coming. They just don't know where. Where? Right. And then we'll talk. We'll talk when we talk about the air war. There's a lot that goes Ooh, into yeah, that. That little uh, kind of shell game that the Allies play. So, uh -huh. I think. Uh, I think that's a pretty good place. I mean, I wish we could say more. I mean, there was a lot of bravery. There's a lot of there things. There is. We, there that, is. We're not trying to downplay the Italian but, campaign, but it's just not other than exciting like what you see in other places. Other than fulfilling, sort of fulfilling, Stalin's wish for an op another a second front. Yeah. Italy doesn't really change the complexion of the war a lot, other than we do knock Italy as a nation out of the war. Yeah, but they again. Surrender, but we're still fighting for it. Uh, and it ties up a lot of Germans. Sure. Many, That's many true. divisions of Germans. Uh, the general there, Kesselring, mm -hmm. who was actually, I do believe, a Luftwaffe general, but he was commanding ground troops. Huh. Well, uh, you know, you got to do what really you Really develops, do. Uh, he's, as a defensive uh, general, he was terrifying. He, I he, bet. He knew how to use every bit of that terrain to slow things down, which is, again, why we wouldn't have conquered Berlin until 1953, <laughs> if ever. Right. Um, if we were trying to push our way up the boot into the Alps, <laughs> that yeah. would have been a horrible way to go. Good luck. Um, so, but yeah, I think again. Next time. Next time, we'll I think we'll, we'll very, talk about the air war. Yeah. Because uh, that's that's one where you got all sorts of sexy movies. You got oh, all yes, the planes, of course, of course. all those things we love. Yes. <laughs> you guys have a great evening. Hopefully you, uh, again, subscribe, like, and share.